This is from Mark, chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. The most important commandment. One of the teachers of religious law was standing there listening to the debate. He realised that Jesus had answered well, so he asked, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbour as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. The teacher of religious law replied, Well said, teacher. You have spoken the truth by saying that there is only one God and no other. And I know it is important to love him with all my heart and all my understanding and all my strength and to love my neighbour as myself. This is more important than to offer all of the burnt offerings and sacrifices required in the law. Realising how much the man understood, Jesus said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Kay. Last week we um, reflected on the story of Bartimaeus, the blind beggar. His story certainly challenged us to think about our own faith in the Lord. His life, his background, the life circumstances around him, all of them from a human perspective, don't really fit into a comfortable religious life many would dream of. On the street, among the large crowd, a born blind beggar was crying for help on top of his voice. O oh Jesus, son of David, son of David, have mercy on me. Many in the crowd, even Jesus' disciples, wanted to keep him quiet, this unclean man quiet, because he seemed to disturb what Jesus was going to do. But he only shouted even louder, Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. But when Jesus heard him, he asked, What do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus said, Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to see. Then our Lord restored his sight and from that moment on, Bartimaeus became a disciple of Jesus Christ. The challenging aspect of this story is that the context of the healing or the miracle was way beyond what the status quo of the time would have expected to see happen. However, our Lord's eyes were upon this one person among the crowd was sincerely seeking for his help and love. Isaiah chapter 42, it says, A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Psalm 41, The sacrifices of God are broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Our Lord's eyes and ears are wide open to this cry of a broken and repentant heart. No matter who you are, no matter what your has, past has been like, no matter what is going on in your life, our Lord's faithfulness in terms of showing his forgiving grace never changes. Always saying, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. 
the moments like this, I mean, where a broken and repentant heart meets with the grace of God, are always awkward and weird in a sense from the human perspective because it happens in the spiritual realm. To the blind eyes of the crowd, it would have been another miraculous healing performed by this man called Jesus from Nazareth. But in the spiritual realm, it was a new birth, a precious new birth, may more precious than a natural birth. The moment, as Luke's gospel says, when there will be more rejoicing in, in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. As Zechariah says, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord. I believe what the Lord, Spirit of the Lord does is to reveal God's love to those who earnestly seek his mercy and grace, as Bartimaeus did. His prof profound love waits and waits at the door of the heart until it opens up to receive this free, completely free gift from God. Yes, it is love. This love of God endures all kinds of rejections, ridicules, mockery from people, but painfully waits till they understand what this love really means to them. Today, one of the teachers of religious law came to Jesus and asked this question, of all the commandments, which is the most important? Of all the commandments, which is the most important? And our Lord's answer was, you must love your Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these. I believe all of us are familiar with these commandments of our Lord. And we have heard about this many, many times. But the more we reflect on these words, and the more we, we experience ups and downs, challenges and issues in life, the more we confess from our hearts that I am not the one who give love. I am not the one who can forgive. I am not the one who are able to understand and care for others, but the one who lives in me, the one who gives me strength, joy, and courage to love, to forgive, and to care for others. No matter how hard we try, no matter how much we know, our love, our care, our understanding would never be able to reach the love flowing from the cross our Lord Jesus died upon. You probably know this song because we have sung so many times in our church. Just part of this song, I just put it up on the um, screen. Maybe we can just read this words of the song together and think about God's love. I am forgiven because you were forsaken. I am accepted. You were condemned. I am alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, should die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do to honor you. Can we read that words again together? I am forgiven because you were forsaken. I am accepted, you were condemned. 
I am alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my king, should die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you in all I do to honor you. Amen. So we worship. That's why we worship, bow down, and give thanks and glory and praise to him. Other than our worship, there's no other way that we might be able to express our utmost surrender and joy, glory to his love. That's what we are here, why we are here, who we are, and what we are. God's love makes us perfect. And his love makes us always righteous before the Lord. And his love lifts us up in times of trouble. And his love lightens up the darkness in our lives so that all of us might live as children of light. This morning, I'd like to remind ourselves, all of us, of that love that we have in our hearts. And also, I'd like to encourage all of us to share that love with brothers and sisters in our congregation, in our family, and in the community. Mm-hmm.